G'day citizens, welcome to the Infrunners. I'm Execute, joined today by Space Tomato and Algorit. How are you doing, gents? Good. Right. Lovely to see your space. Always good. We finally yeah. got you here. We finally got okay. you here. Dev I was here last month, wasn't I? Devilishly was handsome. two months ago? Yes, devilishly, yeah, dev handsome. devilishly handsome. Got the beard thank going. He's catching, you. catching up. Okay. Happy to be in here. Uh, we we judge my my progress here by the uh, the hair on my face and how much yes. it's grown. Yes, it's not yes. very much since I since I first started with Info Runners. It hasn't yeah. been very much. <laughs> Come on, when you first started, you were a ruddy faced youth. Yeah. I definitely didn't have a mustache. Yes, yeah. this is a that's a thing. Hey, hey, you got the mo, you got yeah. the goat, looking great. We'll make a space hobo out of you yet. Don't you worry. Yeah, right. I look forward to it. All homeless, right. homeless tomato. All right, so we wanted to talk about the Maelstrom system. Uh, it was kind of a little bit of a... I, I, I know it's we've had other physics systems in the game, but it was kind of a little bit sprung on me at CitizenCon. Um, I, I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of really kind of happy to see um, the level of detail, the certain things breaking and stuff like that. And so I kind of wanted to go into a bit of speculation on what systems that this will come into in the game and future systems that we could see them expanded into. Mm. And, and and things like that and i thought um space loving the gameplay stuff would bring him along and obviously our grid so he gets the speculation going um so i think we'll start out with um actually real quick one thing out of it um Agrid and i have set this up space so we'll show you two while we're here uh this button we're actually starting a gofundme for citizen con um and I'll, I'll have the link in the description below um but basically, it's really expensive. <laughs> no surprise. Um, yeah. And I'm coming literally for like the next stop after me is Antarctica. Like uh, I'm, I'm probably the only other place I think that's further from me would be the very most south part of New Zealand um, that gets closer to Antarctica than where I live. So, yeah, I'm, I've got to come a fairly long way. Um, and basically, the other part of it is besides me and Agra getting there, we also want to kind of film it a bit i think you're the only person space that i can actually think of that's actually tried to even record something on the floor um and uh, paul was saying that you guys got those like some cheap mics off amazon and you just sat there yeah. with a phone camera and just recorded at the end of the day well we want to go one step further than that and see if we can live stream on the floor yeah. oh we were live streaming yeah oh you were okay cool yeah, we were live on the on the floor. It was very hectic, and uh, it was cool. We got to interview people. Mm -hmm. We stopped by like all the booths and talked to John Crew, and we actually got to see some of them working on some of the props in the game now. So it's definitely nice. a good time live streaming, and people really enjoy it. But man, is it just crazy! I mean, the connections are are, are wild too because there's so many people there. Yeah, so that's yeah. what we want to do as well. Um, so this will uh, help pay. We for... want to take our studio basically and convert it to a portable. Do it so we can yeah. actually. Get a whole rig that just sits on your your, your waist. Well, yeah. um, the, the flight alone from mainland Australia to mainland England is 27 hours. So it's over a day just for us to get there. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So it just shows you how far we're going to come. But um, yeah, so if you want to back us and uh, get us help us get to CISCON, mm. that's the way to go. If you don't, you don't have to. But um, we, we basically, um, we did a vote and I was surprised by how many people said they want us to do a GoFundMe. So, you know, it was about 45% of people. So, And, I, and I've got to say, look, the reason we did the, you put the vote up initially is mm. we were getting, every time we'd mention CitizenCon, we'd have back and say, do a GoFundMe, let us, mm. you know. It was, yeah. So we're finally doing what some of you guys have said we should do. Yeah. Don't feel comfortable yeah. about it, but if we don't do it, we can't go. It's that simple. So, and so yeah. We've yeah. outlined why what we're after, what we're trying to do, and what we hope to do. So if we go, and this is funded, we're going to work. Yeah. That's effectively what we're doing. We're hoping to be able yeah. to bring the CitizenCon experience to you from a non-CIG employee's point of view. Um, but we get Isla and the guys going around talking. But... Yeah, so that's that's kind of where we're at. So. Yeah, so yeah. Well, we'll, um, we'll see how that goes. Um... It's kind of crazy how far away you guys are from England. Like yeah. considering the history, it's like furthest place you can get yet so closely mm -hmm. intertwined. Yeah. Well, it, it's um where I live in Tasmania surprisingly is actually almost exactly the same degrees of latitude as where England is. So, um they they essentially came into Sydney and then they went they almost beelined it for where I live. 
um, and the second city that was ever built. My, my city is the third city that was ever made in Australia. Um, so yeah, it's definitely the old, the second oldest state, just based on history. Um, and they, the actual penal colony, like like what, like they always talk about the convicts and stuff like that. The penal colony was here. It was it wasn't really uh, on the mainland, was it, Agar? It was down in uh, Port yeah. Arthur, where that big massacre yeah. occurred. You know the, the big shooting years ago. Um, the penal colony was Sydney, mm -hmm. but the worst of the worst yeah. got sent down to. Van Diemen Land or Tasmania because that way there was less chance of escaping and causing grief. Mm. And uh, as far away as we can get yeah. them. Well, even it, 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 there's a there's a whole history to that to, to Port Arthur that's very interesting. Even even where that's located, there is literally you can go you can drive down there and there's literally a, a double lane road that goes over it, but it's on a peninsula called Eagle Hawk Neck, and the, the entire gap between it and the mainland Tasmania is probably only 50 meters across. They used to have dogs that were that, that lived in kennels all the way across that line so convicts couldn't escape. Um because it's just this thin bit of land and there's no other way across. But anyway. We've got way off topic here. Anyway, all right, so back to Maelstrom. <laughs> Wouldn't be any problems if we didn't get off topic. Right, Maelstrom. Uh so first cab off the rank is exactly what is Maelstrom. All right. So who wants to take that one? Apart from being a storm, mm -hmm. which kind of sums up what the idea of Maelstrom is, it's a storm, and how that storm is being done is in damage state. Actually, so, I, I looked it up. It's not a storm. It's a whirlpool in water, or the, in the sea or the ocean. I I thought it was a storm as well, but it's not. It's actually like a whirlpool. Yeah, no, it's violent. Yes, violent. That much is true. Disgusting, nasty, kill you type stuff. Mm. But I'm so it's fitting. And yeah, it's fitting. Yeah. So, in 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 Star Citizen terms, though, what is what is Maelstrom? It is the damage system for everything. Yeah. At least from what we know, ships, buildings, um, weapons, and I think that's mainly all that's been confirmed. It's it really is. There's a lot of questions surrounding it because mm -hmm. we know it's the procedural damage system for all the things in the game. Mm -hmm. It's kind of been built off of this damage stuff that they've been working on for years now yep. but we don't know where it stops you know is is this going to be something that you can blow up a base with is it something yes by, by the way they they showed that but mm -hmm. then can does that mean space stations buildings mm -hmm. and cities landmarks outposts what is it that's actually focusing from here yeah. so we'll get to that but yeah it's a damage system they showed a lot um and unpacking that video is kind of complex but that's kind of what this episode's for so um for me it's the the damage system that ties into the physics system as well um and it it, it crosses almost <laughs> when we get to that part because we've got it written down here in the notes um what will maelstrom affect and it actually affects a lot of different systems in the game um but yeah physics is is probably physics or damage would be where what i call it i think you kind of hit it hit the nail on the head there on that one agrid would you, you kind of be on on par with us on that yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. And mm. I was just thinking of the types of things it can impact. And yeah, mm. even as you were talking there, it made me think of landing zones. Mm. Um, mm. Because if we damage landing zones, then that, does that shrink the landing zone, which means different sites. <laughs> you know, if you've got a large landing zone suddenly been damaged, does that impact which ships can now land on that landing zone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, which and that, that literally just came to my mind as, as you guys were talking. It could be total eye in the sky, off the cuff, way out there, fairyland. But yeah. All right. So previous physics systems or damage systems, and this is this is where it becomes a bit confusing for me because in the video at CisnCon they had two gladiuses essentially crash and break up. Um, but in previous systems, and even in the way the repair system works now, and the um, stripping and salvage, is you have an outer layer that you can peel off, and then underneath you have this cage. But when those ships at Sun crashed, there was no underlying cage. So I almost wonder if that system was just put in place to show two ships breaking apart, but not fully realized yet. Like, um, because if you're going to break that apart, you'd expect that it would have that underlying cage that they've had in all the other stuff. And because it's such an underlying system in salvage and stuff like that, I, I, I have to assume, based on what I saw, that that was literally just a physics demo. Those two gladiators crashing was just a demo, right? Um, and, go ahead. And that, that 
really is telling because when you think of a why those gladiuses broke up, you didn't see them break into the parts, which we we know that's how they've done damage states in the past. So they build a ship, they break it into its component parts, so constellation, rouge, neck, body, it, it, tail. It, it broke into parts. It it broke but into parts, but the, it didn't have the underlying system yeah, of the cage. You couldn't say, oh, that's the neck, that's the body. It kind of so it seemed to be a change from that, that the way we've seen damage states done in the past, and so that was that was different. So, you know, it re it reminded me of a video they released um, back in 2015. Yeah. And they called it just new damage model. And it was this video of like, they had a gun, just a ballistic weapon firing at a Gladius and kind of just chipping off little pieces of it here and there. Yep. And I feel like that was like their previous for what this is. That was their, mm -hmm. we want to get to this point with everything in the game. Mm -hmm. And now they've spent these last, I don't know, eight years, <laughs> nine years. Uh, off and on, perhaps working on the engineering and design behind that, and now it's finally something that they can show off in the engine. Yep. Um, for anybody who wants to see that video, it's called the new damage model Star Citizen. It's uploaded March seventh, twenty fifteen. But it is an interesting dive into their history to see like they've had these things planned, they just couldn't do them before. Yeah. Yep. Now, one thing I think we didn't talk didn't talk about beforehand, but does that mean this new damage state system? Stream actually also takes less memory, which means it'll actually streamline it. And that's the question I'm asking, not necessarily. Not sure. Um, it's. I mean, the way they build things, it seems like they're always focusing on trying to make them more data friendly. Like every time we see an update in the monthly report, a lot of the times that they're talking about moving things forward, it's about like how the data is called and stuff like that. I think they just were saying that in the AI section of this last monthly report. So. You know, I, we, I hope it's streamlined because, like, if they want to apply this to everything, oh my god! Mm. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, I, I think so. Let's move on to what systems it will affect, right? So, I, I, I look at the the demo they showed of those buildings falling apart and stuff, and I started to think, well, how does that come into gameplay? So, my my thought is, right, so my house has just been destroyed, uh, or or an NPC's house has just been destroyed. They put out a quest to get it rebuilt. How does that work? And and so basically, then someone comes along with a pioneer or, or some kind of building ship and rebuilds it. And if no one, no player comes and does that, then an NPC will obviously come and do that. And basically, it it is rebuilt. And then I start to think of like how is a building being constructed? And I start to think of the the the, the repair system. It is very similar to the repair system. And they are essentially like a repair is essentially a mini building, is it not? If you if you break it down, so what I'm expecting is the internal structure will go up first. Um, so in ship terms, it would be the cage, and then you would then essentially apply the skin around it. And I think it will be much the same uh, for the building. So we'll get some kind of internals or cage, and 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 then a skin that's applied on the outside. Um, would you guys kind of? assume the same for buildings if that's what it is for the ships or you guys got some other thought process or or, or, or speculation i don't know what to call it man i really i haven't put much thought into base building mm -hmm. to be honest because because they talk a lot about materials and their mm -hmm. properties what they're made of how d dense they are their tensile strength all these things um but then it's also like this needs to be an accessible base building thing and, yep. and star citizen also insists on being very physical and tactile with their stuff so like yep. how are they going to allow us to build these buildings uh, considering all these different properties mm. from all these different materials but also make it look reasonable in the way that they try to make things look so mm. when it comes to base building man i i mean well, i haven't well, I haven't of, been involved in many games with that kind of gameplay it's not too dissimilar from what we do today if you think about it you put up a wooden frame you know you your roof your your walls and then basically you cover it on plaster on the inside and brick or weatherboard or whatever it is on the outside that's the it's essentially the skin so it's i don't want to do that for a spaceship yeah. well, well well the spaceship is different obviously because it, yeah, has yeah, the no, I get you. it has the internal cockpit but it's still an internal and then you so it's essentially three layers right that, that's yeah just it. it's gonna go up but you know, you look at a game like Satisfactory, for instance, and mm -hmm. it's just you point a button at the ground and a building pops up, right? You look yep. at a game like No Man's Sky and something similar happens, but then you go and you mm -hmm. take on other games like, I don't know, maybe 
see all the games that I'm thinking of, Daisy, mm. Fortnite, Rust, don't all these games just have like a holographic representation of the building? You press a button and it's up? It, it depends how much of a focus it is on the game, but you can go back to RTS games on how buildings were built as well, you see. Well, we're getting slightly off topic here, but... Um... Yeah, you could look at um, one of the games that did do a lot more of the, the actual building stuff was um, Life is Feudal, and you would have to you know, yeah. land and then you'd, you'd put down the frame, and over time that, you'd change that frame and as you added more. So, um, so yeah, it is, a, it is an interesting thing to look at the base building. I am connecting all the dots of things I've seen, right? So I, I, I've seen how they've talked about how you would print the internal frame underneath and then you'll put the skin over the top, right? And you guys have obviously um, done the, the stripping and salvage, right? So you've seen the skin come off and you've seen the cage underneath, yeah? Yep. So, yeah. so putting two and two together... Um, you can you can kind of add it up and and yeah. just reversing it to build, and essentially yeah. Well, repairing is like if you kind of think about repair, it's it's been damaged, so you're just building that small section. Where Have base, seen... we're, we're building a ship or building a base would just be from the beginning, so to speak. Yeah. Have you seen the design document for repair? I, I have, but I haven't read it in a really, really, really long time. But um, that's what I'm referring to, actually. The, 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 the... They go crazy in that. Yeah. So, so like, how how much of that do they want to be involved in Maelstrom? You know, like well, oh. they, they well, mentioned in in the in the demonstration that Maelstrom is mm -hmm. going to depend on thickness, Young's yep. modulus, tensile mm -hmm. strength, your yep. yield strength. Like these are legitimate material it, properties it, it goes further than that too because you have multiple properties that can make up something so if you're doing something when you're spraying it on say it's made of metal you gotta put metal on but then it might be organic or wood or composite or whatever so um when you actually when we looked into the crucible actually funny enough that's where that mul and i did a a, a a point of view episode a professional point of view episode with the two repair people and that's where this came about is that they mm. had these machines that were that, that had these different canisters that were made up of different materials. So essentially when you have salvage and you break it down, you'll be breaking them down into their liquids and their solids and their gases. And then yeah. basically to repair it, you would then pass them over to something like the crucible and then it would use them in the reverse to rebuild something. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I guess, I guess the other way to look at it now, is not just the, the crucible. It would also be things like the pioneer. Because, uh, and I think Pioneer and Crucible almost go hand in hand now, if you think about it, because one's doing repair and one's doing um, base building. And I've just realized there is now a ship for repairing buildings. There is. Wow. See, <laughs> as you're talking like that, in yeah. terms of being able to repair and taking the repair from step by step, mm. that also for me raises the question, will Maelstrom, will Maelstrom include wear and tear? Yeah. As a building or a ship ages yep. and components were out, will we see Maelstrom mm. impacting that aspect of yeah. it as well? So you've got we, we have gone a little bit off topic here, but it is important to put down the baseline that you need to understand how things are built and repaired and, and that repair is two systems, essentially, or wear and tear. You've got the textures itself that change and age, right? That's not really exactly part of the Maelstrom system, but the 3D stuff will be a part of the Maelstrom system. So, for example, let's just take a wing on, a, on an aircraft. If that was broken off, physically broken off, that is the Maelstrom system. But if it is just, like, had shots into it and it's just damaged, like the, just the texture, that is not the Maelstrom system. So, though, though it sounds like we're a little bit off topic, that's why, because it's, it's a two-part system. I, I just want to make that clear to those that are listening or watching. And yet, if you're looking at the tensile strength of materials being calculated into that Maelstrom system, that I see the wear and tear tying in with that because you'd have a tensile strength of the materials as they wear down and then eventually getting to a point where they do break. And so it, it's tied, but... That, that, is still, that, is still, that is still a crossing between two systems, yep. and that, that's, that's where it's hard to differentiate. Yep. You've got 3D and 2D, and I'm trying to... There's yep. a cutting point, and I'm, yeah, I'm and just the, trying and to. Even though, yeah. even though you've got the visual on the wear and tear, you've still got that material, that figures that are being calculated, but then tie into that 3D representation of Probably it. Probably more data forged than than Maelstrom, because Maelstrom yep. is really more the damage model. But again, yep. it, 
it, it depends how closely integrated they've got systems and, and at that point we just don't know but i assume you are correct so yeah the tying, the, the tying um, is done to the, to the actual representation that we see in in the damage state yeah all right so besides base building and repair space is there any other uh places you can see where this would start to affect the game there's some real obvious ones but um is there any that you would like to look at well i think do you want me to give you a couple? I mean, uh, there's obvious ways this ties into a lot of different gameplay. Engineering, salvage, mining. Yep. Mm. Asteroids are going to be a big I one. Think a, yeah. I think a lot of people are going to wonder if this ever leads to um, planet tech-based deformation, which is something they've teased before, but also been pretty adamant as likely not happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I, obviously, it's going to be a question on people's minds. What do you guys think? Um, while it is possible because of how the engine is kind of built, it's rather complicated because it requires a lot of updating. And if people are doing that at the same time, if you've ever played a game like Ark or anything that's got train deformation, it can literally, uh, even Eco that you and I played together, mm -hmm. right? If you do something fairly major on the server, it can crash the server. And that's one of the reasons why they probably don't want to look at it because some, You've seen what people have done with A2s and stuff. Can you imagine someone dropping 100 A2 bombs at the same time on one planet? Someone will do that. Test it. Yeah, someone will do that. Make it happen. And it'll just kill the server. And a lot of the data can be lost in crashes and stuff like that. So it's it, it, what it may be physically possible, they're trying to um, nip it in the butt, so to speak. Because, what again, it, in most game development cases, it's like, what do you get out of it? But what do you gain gameplay-wise from that? And it's not it's not a terrible lot other than stupid fun, I guess you could call it. And something I mean, you fun. could def if if you could deform the ground, that could completely change how mining works in this game. Mm -hmm. And that's something we've talked about in the past. So mm. um you wanting to do a mine, you blow apart the the front with dynamite, but yeah. deep in the land, that's clearly damaging it, but my understanding time with Maelstrom. And you do your procedural generation, create a cave, boom, there's your mine. Um, same as you're drilling down, I, I can see applications tying in with that. So, yeah, I, I could see that. Yeah, I think, I think they deliberately went with the more um, traditional mining with the, it's kind of like a node you land on and it just yep. shows you the, the, um, the hologram because it's, it requires a lot less resources to do yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and when I say resources, I'm... That'd be a safe I'm, way to do it. Yeah, when I'm talking resources, I'm talking gameplay resources, obviously. And yep. it doesn't, it's not doing, it's actually not physically changing the terrain. So there's, there's, can you imagine if every planet in this game, because that it comes into the physical energy system where uh, the, per, per, sorry, the uh, persistent energy streaming, if it also had to remember the terrain of planets and think about how big the planets are in this game, right? The memory required for that would just be yep. sheer absorbency. Like, it's insane, right? And, and I think that's another reason why they can't do it. Like, and, and again, it's, it's the gameplay you get out of it, like where if you can just mine under the ground, you don't need to physically have a hole there to do it. And I think if you wanted to do the hole, again, they could do it like a node where, like kind of like our Agrid said, like he's taken what I've talked to him about before, but instead of it just being a cave system where it goes down, can't it just be a vertical cave that goes down? Again, but that would limit where you can do these nodes. You know, they'd just be in a certain place. And again, they'd almost appear in the same place every time where I actually prefer it where it's a bit more random and you never know where it's going to appear because they can fake it. on. If they can do it with a hologram and fake it, then it can be anywhere. That, so there's a huge it's, advantage to That's a much it. easier way to do it, yeah. Mm. I think I, I, I'm more thinking just what kind of possibilities might change if they applied that to planets, but... Mm. We have you know, been... looking at the game and considering all of the stuff that has to go on with this game, obviously that's something that I don't think anybody would expect mm. them to do anytime soon. We've been completely derailed again because we got off the Maelstrom system because that's a different system altogether. But uh, g getting back to Maelstrom, um, I am very interested in, and still talking mining, uh, the, the asteroids because the way asteroids are going to break up and stuff like that, that will all be a part of the Maelstrom system. Um, and, you know, things like the Aaron Halo that we have yet to see, I think that's one of the reasons why it's been a bit delayed and stuff is because they were waiting for this Maelstrom system to come online um, to, do, to, to do those asteroids. And 
you know, big ships like the Orion, they're going to make or break um, how those ships operate, if you think about it. Right yeah. now, we've got these tiny little rocks that essentially crack for, for the mole, but, like... You put... When you're right, punching up the whole thing. Mm. Um, yeah. I would like to hear about that, because that's, again, these are some of the things that they have just kind of haven't said. Um, we don't know... I don't, they might have vocally said specifically what maelstrom is supposed to uh affect yeah. but i don't think they've put it down on paper like a presentation or anything the closest thing we've got is is literally what we saw in that trailer and we saw the the breaking of buildings we saw the breaking of ships we saw um it was the breaking the, rocks that they were shooting the, at the them. yeah the, the the breaking of covers was it say in the actual mm. trailer so that's the closest we've got to actual gameplay tones like your cover can be essentially eroded um but my, my question is, are they preset pieces or is it procedurally generated? Like how how are they actually, um, are they doing it, at, like is it pre-deformed? Like so it just breaks into pieces as you, as you shoot it off? Or is it, like if it's procedurally generated, that, that's just going to change the game for me in so many different ways. Like if you can pick which parts of the asteroid you, so to speak, mine off, um, or, you know, or, or, or do all the parts that you shoot off. Like if I know he's on that corner, and so I'm going to take that corner out and make him move. Like it, it, it starts to add yep. strategy into what you're breaking and stuff like that. It's not just no longer, oh, it's a wall and I'm going to destroy it to remove the cover, which is it's still strategic, but it's a, it's a lower level. You know what I mean? If I can, you know, target the person I'm going after and, yep. and, and manipulate them a little bit, it, it takes it to a different level. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I think overall this is a system that's going to be able to, tie into a lot of different things kind of like engineering will hmm. they'll yeah. just be able to apply it to many different parts of this game and and those parts will be able to be a little bit better for it you know like you're saying with mining and the asteroids hmm. that's a pretty obvious application um are there any others though i i i sat here thinking about engineering and it's like it depends how far they want to take it like um can an item or a component literally physically break or is it just in a neat, in a maintenance state? And what they showed at CitizenCon, um, they were in maintenance state, didn't it? They showed them maintenance state, but when it was broken, broken, they said it was unrepairable. But they didn't mm -hmm. say it was like, can I then take that component and recycle it? Essentially, can I can I break it back down into its um, like, can I send it to a um, a reclaimer to be salvaged and turn back into its raw components and reuse again? They didn't mention things like that. Or is it just waste and it, it, it's put in an incinerator and turned turn into nothing? But, but, yeah, I imagine there's got to be a way to reclaim it. Yeah. So, so, so does that then essentially what I'm asking is, does that mean then every component actually has a physicalized state as well where it can be broken down? Um, it's, it really depends how complicated they want to get with this. And, and again, it's those diminishing returns. Like, what do you get out of a system like that? Do you, well, is there enough gameplay in there to warrant all that extra work? Um, yeah, they're gonna have to come up with a new. Is this is this gonna be used to make a difference between ships that have glass canopies versus not? Are those things gonna react how glass would, or is it some super powerful glass given all these different material properties we now have to well, have? Well, when you when you go past that and you go into say something like the um what were they calling it the um I was talking to someone about this the other day. You know how you've got like all the different materials origin ships are made out of, and then you got all the different materials that Drake ships are made out of, right? Yeah. So you would have to assume that Drake is easy to repair because its resources are more readily available, right? Yeah. Where Origin, you know, probably has to come from an authorized Origin retailer or something like that. Plus it's made out of maple that, that can only be harvested once every 70 years or something like that. You get where oh, I'm trying yeah. to go with it. Yeah. Yep. So That's how it should be. Ships uh, don't break down as often because they've got... Yeah, obviously. Common, whereas obviously. Drake ship, breaking down all the time because but, but that's not again that's obvious that, that's obvious but yeah. the, the part i'm trying to get it is just the pure gameplay part of yeah. it right and that when it when it and then do you make it physicalized right so do i have to to actually repair an origin ship do i have to go out and source that maple tree and then have to spray it on you know what i mean where with, with the drake stuff i can just grab any resource i want you're, you're, that's what I'm trying to start get get towards, like because that's the no, actual, I get you. That's the tangible gameplay part, not not the the effect. Yeah. yeah, and that's part of that's part of um. Gosh, you all remember when they did uh 
item system 2.0. Mm -hmm. So that was all part of that, right? The this idea that everything was going to get a material and mm -hmm. be based on something, and that's how it would go into the economy. So mm -hmm. then it's like, like you're saying, um, when you claim a ship in one system, are you now going to have to pay attention to what it's made of because all that stuff gets sourced from another area, and your ship claim is mm -hmm. more expensive because of the economy? And like, I guess that's not directly compared to Maelstrom, but they're kind of dealing with the same systems. It, it, I'm just thinking now it'll also go into because they mentioned shipbuilding as well. So if we can now build ships, it's going to be the same thing, right? Um, it's kind of scary if you think about it. Like, th this is going to... Can I take my blueprint for an origin ship and build it with subpar equipment or subpar material? If you can build yourself an origin ship, I'd be really surprised because I reckon it'd be like Ferrari where they'll only allow, you know... You've got to be able to build anything in the game. I don't know. They'll, I just, don't know. they'll I, just require you to get the materials. Like it, the recipe for origin ships will probably just be yeah, more yeah. personal. You don't, equipped than you don't think certain ship manufacturers are going to be so exclusive that they won't let you get it? Like like a Ferrari <laughs> or that some of the Tavaran ones, like Esperia and stuff like that? I don't reckon they'll... I mean, I think, I don't I reckon think they the will. alien ones maybe, but mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and assume that for gameplay purposes, everything in the game will be buildable if you mm. can find the recipe. If can, and if you can't find that recipe, that that might be well, more well, difficult. You know what I'm thinking they're going to go with it? I think they'll go with licenses. So you can buy a ship, or you can buy a license to make that ship as many times as you want. I, I, I wouldn't even be surprised if we do the finding of blueprints. Mm. Because you look at Asperia in law, that they hunt down the blueprints of the old ships which they then rebuild that's why they you know or they take actually, a ship and then reverse engineer it well they actually you just kind of gave me an idea it's science it's research yeah and there is a research module on the endeavor we've kind of got off topic here but it is interesting where it's going um but yeah i don't know yeah i don't know all right um that's kind of about all we wanted to talk about unless you guys got anything else you want to add to it um I guess I'll put the question out. What would you like to hear from people in the comments below? Hmm. Yeah. Because this is this is a system oh. that is so intertwined. It 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 it's a hard topic to talk about because it it is so intertwined. Like you've heard all the ones we've talked about today. It's, it's it crosses so many systems in the entire game, but only in a small fraction each. So you've got to talk about every individual one to pull out the uh, yep. the maelstrom part. It's a bit hard. There's also just not much to know about it. Yeah. Almost all of the, what we were saying today is just speculation and, and guesses because like from what they've shown us, basically they've shown us this is a damage system based on cantilever beams and actual stress forces and it'll be applied to a lot of things. Well, well let's put but, that question uh, out then. You know, this much. What would we you want to know? So what would you, so I'm going to put the question out then. What would you like to know about the Maelstrom system? What, what, what questions do we need answered? Uh, what do people <laughs> think it won't be applied to? I guess. I think. I think it's. I think it's because we don't understand it enough. We, ac know? we actually yeah, need more. It's... We need more details. Is is my kind of question there? Ooh, how about this? All these times that we've talked about wear and tear and mm -hmm. damage to these different ships, they kind of stayed away from ever talking about the actual damage system behind them. Like we talked about wear and tear, we know that thrusters would take damage over time and we've known that like this damage system was in these videos from from previously but they never really mentioned maelstrom or something like it why why did that start coming up recently what do people think do they think this is a new system that they just recently got started working were they working on it for a while and they only got it to a point where they were comfortable sharing it now or uh, is this something that they just kind of sprang up out of nowhere in the last two years because starfield did it or is it something that they'd planned and were working towards and never got to a state where... Yeah, I, I, I can kind of answer yeah. that. The The needs of it for Squadron 42 are a lot less of what is needed for the multiplayer part, right? So you can have ships explode and break up and stuff like that in a single-player game, but you just don't... You're not going to go over and look at those pieces the same way you're going to do it in a multiplayer game where you're actually doing the salvage and repair. The, uh, let's be honest, there's not going to be any salvage and repair in Squadron 42. Uh, other than the reclaimer that you see reclaiming, but you won't be doing it yourself, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, uh, may maybe some hand tool repair. But anyway, you get my point. Like the 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 needs of a single player game are not the same same as a multiplayer game. And now, as they're wrapping, kind of wrapping up Squadron Forty Two, that 
they've taken that core foundational tech of squadron like we did in the last video here uh space and they're moving it over and this year we'll be working on core fundamental tech for the multiplayer game and again that's why i think we're seeing base building uh because it is su it's such a multiplayer focused thing um and doing base building also gives you repair and it yeah you, you get where i'm going with this it's the same the same thing as last time but yeah i feel like i'm repeating myself but in the comments um I'd like to hear what people think of the Maelstrom system. Do they realize just how much of an effect it's going to have on the game? Because it's basically um, kind of like what Space was saying with the wear and tear system. It, it, it is half of the wear and tear system, but like it, 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 it touches so many systems and different parts of gameplay, but it's always a part of it. It's not the whole thing. Uh, even if you look at salvage, right? You've got, you know, like physically breaking the ships down but then also you've got the stripping and the changing of the texture and stuff so so it's half of this 2d 3d you know it, it goes hand in hand it's like a yin yang with wear and tear i guess is the easiest way i could probably explain it um but yeah what, what do you guys kind of see understand it enough to to see the effect it's going to have on the game i think is my question in the comments algrid what about yourself my question is what do you know about or what do you feel you know about maelstrom and the demon state and what do you want to know yeah, that's a good one. All right, uh, Space, you already asked yours, didn't you, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Yep, cool. All right, uh, where can people find you on the interweb, Space? Uh, really? Just search me on YouTube. I've got a couple of channels on YouTube, mm -hmm. Space Tomato and Space Tomato 2. A uh, new channel is coming soon, so keep an eye out for that. But I also stream on Twitch, uh, do a couple podcasts that go out on audio platforms and YouTube. And we have an org. We have a, a Discord server. It's, mm. it's lovely. It's fun. A lot of great mm. people there and we have a good time. So if you want to come and join and hang out and talk or play some Star Citizen, mm. you can do that there too. Hey, Algrid, I've heard a rumor the new channel is called Space Beards. Space Beards. Well, that called. doesn't come out until we get the new character customizer. <laughs> yeah, in, in, you know. I was just saying Space, Space Tomato 3 is probably what we'll go for. Yeah, you know. yeah. Originality. And all, yeah. Originality. <laughs> no. But it's not Space Tomato 2, the number. Yeah. All right. It's no, that's Space true. Space Tomato also. That is true. Yeah. Space, yeah. Space tomato, tomato everything or something like that. All right. With that, then uh, don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and thank you to everyone that went extra mile on the end of the video uh, on Patreon. All right. Uh, he's been Space Tomato. He's been Algrid. He's been executed, and we're out of here. Take care. See you, citizens.